Hey friends, hello, happy Friday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. It's Lisa Hetrick. We made it to Friday, right? Okay, friends, we have a really fun tutorial today, but let's just do a quick hello to everyone who has popped in. There's so many of you here today. It's exciting to see everybody. Judith, Rhonda, Linda, Susanna, so many friends. Friends from Finland. Friends from the West Coast, Midwest. Super excited. Okay, all right, today I have a really, really fun tutorial. Last week, sorry, I missed you guys. And just a little bit of a heads up about next week's tutorial. Next week's tutorial is not going to be on Friday or Thursday. It's being bumped up to Wednesday. I have some appointments next week that I need to take care of. So next week's tutorial is going to be on Wednesday at noon. We're going to do it during the lunch hour and give our friends on the West Coast a little time to come in so it's not so super early. Okay. All right. Today's tutorial is going to be fun. I'm turning off a bunch of things here. Today's tutorial is going to be super fun. I had this idea of doing a bit of an abstract floral with watercolor and a line and wash painting but I wanted to do it with stamps. So we're going to do it with the Wishing You Well stamp set, my brand new stamp set with Gina K Designs. And we're gonna do a little bit of mashup. I'm gonna teach a little bit of color mixing, a little bit of line and wash painting, and backgrounds. So I've got a, like a mishmash of things that we're gonna to cover today. Okay, hello, everybody's made it to the live. Just seeing everybody else pop in. Okay, let's dive in. All of the supplies are listed down below in the description here in YouTube and on Facebook if you're watching on Facebook. So let's just go ahead down to our overhead camera. I see all kinds of people popping in. One more thing I want to share. If you have a question along the way during this tutorial, because today I'm kind of jam packing several different techniques into this lesson today. If you have questions along the way, pop the word question or Q in the chat with the question so that I can answer it live. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. This is the inspiration for the project that we're going to make today. And let me get my glasses off so I can see. I had this idea. I actually woke up with this idea a couple days ago and I said, hmm, I really wonder how this is going to come out. So we've got a lot of couple bunch of different things that are happening here but we're going to be doing some water coloring and a little bit of stamping and a little bit of masking so I've got some Gina K masking magic here as well and you know what now that I think about it I don't think I put this listed this in the description with the supplies so just know that I used some Gina K um, masking magic let's get started first with a little bit of a lesson about line and wash. So this technique that I've done here with the stamps is replicating a watercolor technique called a watercolor and an illustration technique called line and wash. So I'm going to bring in a little, I'm going to bring this in and we're going to go through this. So here are the colors that I'm using today. I've got opera pink, lemon yellow, and phthalo blue. This is like a CMYK. These three colors are really good pigments to make uh, other colors with. And we're going to be doing a little bit of color mixing with this opera pink and this lemon yellow to create some coral colors for our painting today. And um, phthalo blue, we're going to talk about like that level of intensity with phthalo blue. So getting into line and wash and a little bit of color mixing before we start our project. So line and wash is basically, um, basically exactly like what it sounds like. I've got a pen. I did this really quick drawing and I want to give it a little bit of color, but I don't want to take the time to add color on every petals. Think about lighting and think about, um, contrast. I really just want it to have a little bit of whimsy and a little bit of color. So that's where line and wash comes in. So I'm going to do a little bit of color mixing here. I'm going to move this over and I'm going to show you what that would look like. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this 
um, a little bit of that opera pink. But before I do that, I'm just going to kind of get everything wet. And you can see I used a pen that was not bleed proof. And the reason why I like to do that is because I like that um, gray coming in and mixing in with my colors. So I've just kind of added a little bit of water here. Brush is wet, paper's wet, picking up a lot of pigment. This is about a... Um, not a whole milk consistency. We're at like a 2% milk consistency. And I'm just going to drop some of that color in and let it mix with the black. And that just becomes kind of like my line and wash. I could pull some of that out. And all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of color. The cool thing about this is that it adds just a little bit of color. I've got a lot of black here. I'm going to pull some of this out. So what I'm doing is just with a brush, a clean brush, just kind of pulling some of that water away. And that opera pink is just kind of mixed in with that black. Now we're going to replicate this with our stamps and it's going to be less messy, so to speak, less washy looking. So I'm going to drop a little bit of that in there. So a little bit of line and wash. And it just adds a little bit of color in an abstract way. I'm going to mix this blue with this lemon yellow and get myself a green right here. I need a little more lemon yellow. Thalo blue is really intense blue, like super intense blue. It's a staining color. Um, it's one of my favorite colors. It's a pure pigment. And it's a great mixing color because it'll give you a really vibrant, green. Look at that green. That's not really the green of plants, but it really is a fun green to do a little bit of line and wash with. So line and wash is just kind of messy. I just wanted to show that to you because we're going to replicate this look with stamps. If I want to get that green a little bit more realistic, I would add a little bit more of the blue to it and just kind of keep going back and forth. And then watch if I pop a little bit of that pink in there. Let's see what we get. So I can start to get another value of that color. Anyway, this isn't the color mixing that we're going to be playing with, but we're just playing with it here for a little bit of line and wash. All right, let's put this aside. Again, these are the three colors that we're working with. Um, oh, we got a question. Dawn just asked a question right out of the gate. I want to purchase a set of pan colors. Can you suggest one for beginners? Oh, Dawn, I have so many suggestions. So yes. So this is a common question that I get from um, people often. So one of the, Dawn, pop in the chat. Tell me a little bit about what you want to use your watercolor for mostly for paper crafting projects or for painting, like doing painting projects that you want to paint for other people. I'm thinking it's going to be for paper crafting projects and for card making projects. So kind of let me know that in the chat because I have a great recommendation for um, a watercolor set that will that is a really high quality but really an artist grade set that's great for paper crafting. And that's the Paul Rubin set. But pop that in the chat while we move along with the lesson. And then I'll just, I'll grab a few to show you at the, towards the end. Okay, line and wash. Super messy, but you get that feeling. You've got that drawing happening. Okay, Dawn, for paper crafting. So before we end the lesson today, I'm going to go ahead and pull a couple examples of some pan sets for you. The first one that I would recommend though, because it's really, really good, is Paul Rubens. And after, it's easily, readily available on Amazon. Um, <laughs> Donna just made a really funny statement. Um, this is great. Boho Astronaut put Windsor Newton Cotman is a good set too. That's another one that I was going to share. So I'll pull a bunch towards the end of the lesson today. Great beginner sets to get started with. And I know I've covered this a couple times um, in the context of other lessons that we've done, but maybe I need to do just a video on that. 
Donna just shared that um, she has a little bit of a type A personality and this would really bother her. Yeah, it, it would. It can be bothersome. But remember, the purpose of line and wash is just to... It's more of a sketchbook technique. So if you're working in your sketchbook and you're doing illustration work or if you're stamping in your sketchbook and you just kind of want to play a little bit and test out colors, that's kind of what it really is useful for. So, but we're going to replicate this in a little bit more of a controlled way with our stamps. So let's go ahead. I'm going to bring in, let's see, where are we? Here we go. So I stamped out the boot from the Wishing You Well stamp set. So here's our Wishing You Well stamp set. You can see that mine is getting like super, super well loved already. We're going to do a little bit of mashup of some watercolor techniques and some background techniques with this. Um, I love that you guys are all sharing your thoughts on paper and, and, uh, watercolors in the chat. It's perfect. Okay, I stamped the boot on some masking magic. And the reason why is that here is technically my illustration, right? My illustration of the boot. I'm going to put this masking magic over top of it because I want to preserve the black and white version of it. And then we're going to do some stamping around this, but first we're going to build our abstract background. Now, Dawn, with the type A personality, this might, this might make you feel a little uncomfortable, but I want you, I'm going to encourage you to give this a try. Okay. We are going to paint my brush is wet, clean. There's no pigment on it. We're just going to paint with water and we're just going to do these little squigglies and just kind of get some round organic shapes, not completely round circles, but just some organic kind of shapes that feel like big petals. Okay, like big, let's just call them rosettes. And we're just gonna do some, a couple here, right around, just get a little bit of water here. And these are gonna be our foundation foundation pieces. So you can see I'm gonna get I got a little hair in there. Let's get that out. You can see I'm gonna turn this to the light. You can see it just kind of looks like a bunch of water in circles. I'm gonna put a little one up here. See how loose I am with the brush? I'm just dancing the brush. I call this brush dancing. And now we're gonna drop some color in where we had it. And see I'm just kind of dancing the brush around, letting the water do its thing. This is very loose, very whimsical, very free. And it's just going to get you comfortable with dropping water wet into wet. <laughs> so I'm just creating these little abstract backgrounds around my boot. With a little bit of opera pink. Now opera pink is a very common color in watercolor, very common across all brands, many brands. It is what they call a fugitive color, which I think is kind of a mean word, but they call it a fugitive color because it is a color that will fade, but I like it. And I think it's perfect for our paper crafting projects. I'm gonna add a little bit more like right here and just kind of let it do its thing. And see how I kind of have like this big bloopy blop kind of going around it? digging it. All right. Now I'm going to do a little bit of color mixing. I'm going to take some of our opera pink right there. Take a little bit of our yellow, pop that in there and let's play with what kind of color we're going to get. I really love that. So it really just kind of changes. See how opera pink is really like super neon. Adding a little bit of yellow to that opera pink just gives us a really beautiful blush coral-like pink. I like it. Dawn says, I like it. That's cool. I'm going to drop a little bit in here. I want this, this consistency right now that you see here. 
is a little bit, um, was a little bit watery, a little bit like skim milk. I don't want it to be skim milk. I want it to be a little more 2 percent -y. So I'm going to add a little bit more pigment and a little bit less water. So you see me kind of tapping off my brush over here to get that water out. And that's what I'm doing to kind of get that water out. I'm going to put a little more yellow in there. I want that coral color back. And I'm just going to drop that in a couple of little places. I'm going to make some more. I didn't quite make enough of that paint, but I'm going to make some more. Just dropping it. I'm dancing my brush. Just kind of tap, tap, tapping it. Got that hair in there all around here. Hi, Lynn. Lynn just joined. Yes, Dawn looks like a rose petal, and we're going to make it look more like roses. Little ro I'm going to do a little lesson on painting rosettes, but we've got this background going here. And remember, our boot underneath is preserved. There's no paint or, or um, water, hopefully, getting underneath of it because I've got the mask here. So I've got the heat tool. We're going to turn this on and we're just going to dry this down completely so that we can add a layer of the rosettes and I'm going to teach you how to do the little tiny rosettes over top and this is going to become our background before we do the stamp. All right. We got this big puddle of water here. I'll let it do its thing. I do want this to be completely dry. Okay, so it's completely dry, and just as a quick reminder, the paper, the watercolor paper I am using is 100% cotton. It's the paper that I use every week um, in our paper crafting projects, and this is the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. It is linked in the description. It's one of my favorites for paper crafting. I don't use it as much for doing a larger painting or something um, something else like that I want to frame, but you can use this paper. Um, I do just recommend trying it because it is kind of a gateway paper to some of the more expensive papers like the Arches brand or the Canson Heritage brand. Nerd fact. Okay. All right. So this is completely dry, sort of. Let's take a quick peek at what's going on under here. So still good. Still good behind the mask. Now, I want to mix up a bigger pool of this color because we're going to make some rosettes with it. And I'm going to talk a little bit, I'm going to share how we're going to paint rosettes. This could work for a peacock. Yes, it could work for a peacock. So these are great colors. These are great, great colors. All right, I've got a big honking mixture here. This, I've got more of a whole milk consistency, and I want to get quite a bit of this mix of color. So I don't, I don't have a lot of water added. I'm going to clean my brush, just kind of get, sop off all that extra wet on that brush, because these brushes, these are the Princeton Heritage brushes. I absolutely love them. They hold a lot of water. They're one of my favorites. Adding a little bit of that lemon yellow. And we're starting to get kind of an orangey color, but I'm feeling like I don't like this one. You can see I'm, oh, actually I do like it. See, I'm kind of getting that coral look, but that 100%, it's like a 100% whole milk kind of look. But watch what happens when I start to add a little bit of water to it. I can get a different value of that color just by adding water to it. So we're going to use this. This is a good pool of paint. And we're going to make these little rosettes, this little blob. We're going to go from blobs to blooms. 
we're going to create little cabbage roses around this boot. Okay? So my brush is really, I'm going to get this really dried off here. And just double check what we got going on here. Really dried. It's wet, but not like super wet. I'm going to come in and get some of this whole milk consistency here. And I'm just going to start right down here. So I'm holding my brush a lot like I would hold a pencil. I'm holding it very, very close this to the ferrule here right up top because I feel like I have more control when I'm doing that. If you're back out here and you're kind of doing things, you're doing, you're holding your brush and you're doing more loose kind of work. When I want to do work with my watercolor brush and I want it to be a little bit tighter, I'm going to pull up, pull and choke up to the ferrule here. Okay, now we're going to do a series of C curves, little C curves around the shape. And they're not going to look like much at first. They're going to look a little unusual, but I'm using my belly of the brush and I'm kind of making these C curves around the edges. Many of you here who've taken classes in my Craft Your Joy classroom, I have a whole class on doing, actually I do these rosettes a lot in a lot of classes. If you've taken the class with um, the welly, yeah, I was trying to think, did we do that? Um, talked about this last time. We did little rosettes in that class too. I have a class in at crafterjoy.com, my online classroom, where you can paint this painting. Um, it's called Wildflowers in a Welly. Okay, so we've got, but we're doing some of the lessons here today. All right, we've got these little C curves, and my brush is wet. I'm taking off a lot of that color, and I'm just going to come in and touch the edges to soften this a little bit. Just soften this up. So it's giving the blob some bloom shape. And I can use a little bit of that color and just kind of dance around a little bit. See, I'm just dancing the tip around and just using the paint that's there to give that blob some shape. Okay, I'm digging it. All right, let's move on to the next one. We're going to do just kind of all around the boot here. And the purpose of this is today, I am mixing painting in watercolor with stamping, okay? We're doing a little bit of both to create that line and wash, we'll call it faux line and wash look, that was kind of messy, but this is a little more controlled. Okay, coming in, doing a bunch of little C curves, C curves, going around, just can take the belly of the brush and make it a little wider. You can come in and do, see how simple this is? You're just kind of coming in with little tiny C's to create some, give it a little bit, give that blob a little bit of dimension. All right, I'm going to come back in with my brush. It's clean. It's just wet. And I'm going to just touch the edges and just use that paint and smoosh it around a little bit. Love that. This one's even a little bit more faint. Kind of digging that. I like that a lot. Okay, we're going to come in. Just keep going. I'm running out of paint here. I have a tendency to, so I'm going to mix up some more. Let's mix up a bigger pool of it. See that bigger bloop right there. But look at those blobs. They're already starting to look like they have texture and dimension, which is super nice. I love that. Let's add a little bit of yellow right here to get that coral color. And let's come in. So we've got about a 2% milk consistency here. I don't know if I like that, but we'll see. We're just going to add some C curves. Just keep doing it. Belly of the brush, you can get bigger C curves as you're going around. Little C's or crescent moons, half moon shapes. Okay. A little more pink in it. Clean brush and just kind of dance the brush around what you just did. 
and this just kind of softens those lines so that we don't have those hard lines. And I actually like that one. I kind of like it, even though it has a little more, um, it has a little more pink in it than I wanted. Let's get a little more yellow back in our mix for our final one that we're going to do over here so I can bring back that coral like color that I'm going for. All right, let's do this right here. We'll start with our C curves. And these are just, I'm going really like wide, thin and thick lines just to kind of create these little rosettes. I'm kind of digging it. Lynn just said the colors are so beautiful. Tell me what you think about this technique. Let me know in the chat. Many of you who've taken, I mean, I've done this before on the channel, but we haven't, we haven't mixed like watercolor painting, you physically watercolor painting with our stamps to kind of create that mashup of a composition. And that's what we're doing today. Okay. <laughs> Dawn said, I think I can do the little C's. You can do the little C's. You absolutely can. Look, I'm just dancing the brush around. I can come back over here, but I kind of want to leave this the way it is because um, we're going to be doing some over stamping to create that line and wash look. I'm digging the way this looks. Let's just go ahead and um, dry it so that we can move on to our next step. Okay. All right. Now, see how there's a little bit of a harsh line right here? I'm not digging that. So we're going to take a clean brush and just touch the edges of it and just kind of feather it out. So anywhere that you feel in your composition that where the lines are too hard or there's a pool of watercolor in an area that feels like it's not creating that, um, that look, that ethereal or that blended feathered out look you just go into the edges with a brush and just kind of a little bit of a wet brush and just kind of feather it out you can see I'm just kind of going all over all of it but I'm kind of really liking the way this came out let's go ahead and just dry this out and see where we are with it a little bit wet. It's a little bit wet, but that's okay. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit. We're going to start doing our light and wash. I'm going to pull. Nope, not going to pull that away yet. I have the the stamp, the big honkin' floral from the Wishing You Well stamp set, and I've got some obsidian amalgam. So this black ink is going to replicate our illustration pen. And we're stamping, we're going to stamp over top of the pattern that we created. So we've got this one layer happening. We've got our watercolor painting. We're going to stamp over top of it. And it's going to give us the illusion of like three dimensions on one plane. Because we've added all of this extra, we've painted in all of this extra texture and dimension. Okay, let's just go ahead and ink this up. And I'm just going to follow what I've got going on here. Eventually, we're going to be cutting this out with a master layouts die for the front of our card. So some of these pieces and some of the things that we're stamping are going to ultimately be cut out. All right, I'm going to come over here, just kind of stamp that. And it's okay. See how I want it to go in and go behind? the boot so you've got that illusion of there's something coming forward in your composition and there's illustrations that are behind it. So that's how we do it. Masking magic. All right, I'm going to come in over here. Just kind of stamp that. So we've got those rosettes underneath it that are giving the uh, floral some extra texture. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to come like, I think I'm going to come in close to the boot right here and stamp that right there. 
All right, let's just go ahead and clean that all. Now, let's cover that up so we don't get that all over us. Now I'm going to pull this off because we've got a little bit where the water was. You can see that some of the obsidian didn't like attach. Like it's not 100% black here. And that's kind of cool. So it gives us that little bit of line and wash look that felt, you know, kind of scary from here. So we get that look and feel. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to do a little something else. I'm going to do a little something else here. We're just doing a super duper mashup to add a lot of texture and dimension here. I've got the smaller flower from the stamp set. And I am going to, this could get messy, but I want to add a little bit of extra something. I'm going to take a little bit of this um, opera pink. I'm going to paint it on my stamp. And then I'm going to come out here and just kind of stamp that down, stamp it down here, stamp it right there just kind of let it dry and do its thing. So we're getting more layers of texture without height. We haven't added any height to the project. Love it. Okay. Let's go ahead and let that dry or force it to dry. Oh, I love it. All right. So we've got all of that texture and dimension. We've got that kind of line and wash look. Now while everything is still just kind of a little bit wet, we're still a little bit wet around that boot. I'm going to come in to the boot. My paint, my paint water is tinged pink. That's okay. Got a little bit of water here. I'm just going to add a little wash of water across this boot. So let's just tilt that a little bit so that you can see that little bit of wash of water. And I'm going to drop a little bit of that phthalo blue in there. And just kind of coax it around for that first layer of wash. Gloria says she loves that. That's mixing up a little bit. Let's add this in. See, I'm just kind of letting this be a wash over top of this boot. And it's not bleeding. You see that the black stamped boot is not bleeding like you would an illustration pen where you get this mixture of uh, those grays and blacks and that pink. It's not bleeding because I'm using the Obsidian Amalgam ink. So that Amalgam ink is perfect for your watercolor paper crafting projects because it won't bleed. It's great for Copics too or any kind of alcohol based marker that you might use. Um, I know that, let me know in the chat if you, um, who does Copics? Like who's using Copic markers for their projects? Amalgam is perfect for that. So I've got this little line and wash and I'm just going to Add a little bit of water here. Got a little bit of purple happening. Just kind of let that be kind of washy. Hi, Andrea. Oh, Andrea's here. I have her earrings. They're so cool. Andrea makes the most amazing jewelry. I have many of her pieces. Okay, there we go. I'm adding a few more bits of color here. Now I'm going to move this to the side and let this dry. We're going to move on to starting to create some of the watercolor details that we're going to put on the boot and add a little bit of texture and dimension, washy watercolor without a, su a lot of super height. All right, got the big floral and we're not using a lot of inks today. I used the amalgam and I used a little bit of a fresh asparagus today. We're using our watercolors today. The brush is wet and I'm going to dip it into the phthalo blue. 
and I've got this consistency. Here's my consistency of the phthalo blue. That is intense. That is a whole milk consistency. And I'm just going to just paint it on to the stamp. Got a little bit of wash happening. I'm going to stamp with this. Whoa, let's turn this over. Okay. We're going to stamp that down. Clean my brush. And now I'm going to use what's here. Got a clean brush. Still using that big honking number 10. You could use a number 6 if you'd like. You could use whatever you have. But I like these round brushes that come to a nice point. And I'm going to use the color that's here. And just like a line and wash, just activate it on the tip of where I stamped it and just use what's here. My brush is wet, the paper is dry, and I'm just touching the tips of those petals just to kind of get it moving and then coaxing it into the center. If the brush, if you're using a big brush and it feels like too much, you could always go to a smaller brush. Here's a number two. It was starting to feel like it was a little, a little too chunky to get into those little petal spaces. Donna says she loves that she can paint the stamp. Yes, just get that consistency. Get that really nice thick consistency, that whole milk consistency with your paint, and you can use it. Wendy just shared that she's never painted on stamps before. Well, good. Today's lesson is a, is a good one then. Um, oh my gosh, I'm really kind of digging the way this looks. It's very washy. It's pretty intense. This phthalo blue is very intense color. I love it though. See how there's just a little bit too much like right here? I'm just going to take my clean brush and just wash over it a little bit. And this technique is called lifting. So it's a great way to kind of come back in. And if you feel like you have too much paint or you have a little bit too much something in an area you don't want it to be, just clean off your brush and you can just lift it right out. Okay. <laughs> This is fun. So this, I'm going to leave this the way that this, this is because I really like the way this looks. And we've got that faux line and wash kind of feel to it. We've stamped it. We've used the phthalo blue and I painted that onto the stamp. We stamped it down. That's our line. And then we took those, that wet paint and just drew, just painted it in, draw it into the center of that flower. That's our wash. So we've got that line and wash look and feel. Love this. Loving the way this looks. Okay, let's dry this because we're going to end up going over to the die cutter. And cut this out. Look at that nice and dry. Look at that. It has that like indigo kind of look to it. Oh my gosh, can you just imagine like doing a whole background pattern with this? We have to do it. We have to do it. Okay, there's been a lot of nerding out today. I can hear myself nerding out over this technique for line and wash. Dawn just says, seems easier to paint the stamps than, than freeform, at least to me. Yeah, I would agree with you. I would totally agree with you. All right, I lost my screen. Let's bring you back. Um, okay, there we go. I lost everybody for a second. Um, looks beautiful. Love that technique Andrea just shared. Yes, I'm loving it. All right, let's come back to our piece here. We're going to die cut this out. Now, um, this will come off of your stamp, but if you're using a paint that is a little more staining, like this phthalo blue, it is going to, it probably will stain it a little bit, but look, it didn't. Um, I'm not really good at with cleaning up after my stamps, after I've used them. <laughs> I really should. I really wish I just had someone that would do that for me. It would be a lot more fun. But, um, okay. So now I'm going to come back into the boot here. 
and I'm going to add a little bit across that center because I want there to be a little bit more of a washy feel to it. So let's just add a little bit more. Lift some up and out, lift some up and out, add a little bit here, just kind of let that be. So this has that feeling of line and wash, but we stamped it in. Eek, I'm loving it. All right, let's go. We're going to come over to the die cutter. We're going to be cutting out two things. We're going to cut our base, make sure everything's dry. We're going to cut this piece right here. I am digging the way this looks. I would have really loved to just do this all over this entire page to get that really fun background. Okay, we're gonna go over to the table. I'm gonna take my face out because you won't see me. And then let me just switch microphones so that you can hear me over at that table. While we die cut. Okay, I'm here. Hopefully everybody can hear me really well with the microphone. It looks like everything's good. Again, I'm still trying out all this fun tech stuff that we're doing um, because we're gonna be bringing on some guests soon. All right, the paints I used today, friends, I wanted to share, these are White Knight's paints. These are the three colors I used from the tube, but here they are in a, a, in a um, my okay, kitty cat just jumped in. Um, super cute. Here they are in the pan sets. So super fun. I'm also I also didn't forget we're gonna get out those um, some of those beginner sets and share them with everyone. So I've got this. Let's just make sure we're in frame here. And if the camera's bouncing, it's bouncing a little bit. We've got our whole background piece. I'm loving the way this looks. It kind of it's very painterly. Our technique today was very painterly. I think I'm going to center this. I thought about doing it this way or that way. I think I'm just going to straight up center my master layouts. This is one of my master layouts dies from Gina K. But oh, boom! I've got a little bit of tape. I'm going to hold this down. I am using the Intracut machine. Oh, that's. Yeah, that'll hold. I love this machine. I've shared it. I've used lots of machines over the years. The Sizzix, the, I love the Platinum 6, but I really like this Intercut machine. It's very, um, my paper is bowing, so I really want to make sure this is down before I cut. I love this machine because it really is easy on my hands. And as everyone knows, I'm a graphic designer been a designer for 30 years, a little more than 30 years, and um, I have some, you know, I got some carpal tunnel issues, and this machine doesn't hurt my hands, so it's really nice. I haven't tried any of these electric die cutters. Let me know in the chat if you have and you like them. I've been intrigued by them. All right, I've got my piece cut here. I'm really loving the way that looks. Let's pull this up a little bit so you can see some details. Let's see if the camera will focus. Yeah, there we go. Uh, not super focusing. All right. Now, let's come in with and cut this beautiful flower out. Friends, when we finish today's live, I know that this afternoon I'm probably going to take a piece of paper, take a piece of watercolor paper, and, and paint a bunch of these and let them paint them in the multiple colors and see what we get. All right, let's cut this out. The other thing I like about this machine is it doesn't make that badonk sound. Ooh, Ooh, had a little bit of color there. Let's pop this out. Something was still a little bit wet. Oh my gosh, look at that. I just love it. Love it. Okay, I'm going to have... While you're looking at this, I'm going to pull a couple of the, I'm going to pull a couple of some of those beginner sets that we talked about right from my desk. Um, let's see. Beginners. Where? Ah, all ribbons. Cottons. 
good one. Even these are good ones. Even these are good ones. We talked about that one last week. Okay. All right, we'll put them over on the desk for when we're ready to talk about it. Let's go ahead and head back over. We've got our die cut pieces. And let's start to put together our... Let's go ahead and put together our um, our card. <laughs> loving, loving, loving it. Okay. Just making sure we're still live. A couple little weird things happening. Hopefully everybody can hear me. I changed microphones. Let me know if you, if you can't. Well, if you can't, then you wouldn't be able to hear me, so that doesn't make any sense. But All right, let's start assembling our card. But yeah, if somebody could pop in the chat that they can hear really well with the um, with the new microphone. That would be great. Yeah. Oh, Susan. All right, Susanna just asked a question. Do you think? Oh yeah. The question was, do you think Rosa Gallery watercolor would work well with stamping with stamping what? Stamping flowers. We've got a little ambulance going by. Sorry about that. Um, Susanna, yes. And I actually grabbed one of those sets to talk about um, since we had the question about beginner watercolor. So I am going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, everybody can still hear me just fine, so that's great. Um, again, just checking all my tech. All right, I have a piece of black onyx watercolor. Um, black onyx Gina K Designs paper. And I'm folding it. This is, I'm folding it a little bit differently, like a tent fold. Normally I do my folds the other way, but to say, today I just decided to try something new. I've got a little bit of Gina K Connect glue. We're going to adhere this piece. Let me know. I'd like to hear from everyone. Let me know in the chat if you feel. On this channel, we focus a lot on techniques mainly watercolor techniques or watercolor-esque techniques uh, versus the card anatomy and versus like a lot of cardy making techniques, but we do make card projects. Let me know if that's still resonating with you. If everyone's feeling like they really still like um, the, the kinds of things that you're learning from me. I really am trying to focus on teaching techniques and teaching the watercolor techniques so that you feel more comfortable with watercolor because I love it so much and it has, I nerd out about it so much. Okay. I would love to hear what you think. Okay. I've got this down on the card. I'm really digging it. Now look at all of the texture and dimension that we've achieved here. We've got this, we've got watercolor in the background. We've got that abstract watercolor going on in the background and we did those little C curve rosettes to kind of create that cabbage rose look. And then over stamped with the big honkin' floral from Wishing You Well to give us that line and wash look that I wanted to achieve. And all the while masking off the boot. So the boot is in, all right, we're nerding out. I can hear it in my head. The boot is coming forward in this composition and the florals and the watercolor cabbage roses are going behind. They're going back. So we've got that dimension happening in this card that really is exciting. It's really exciting. And we've done that all on one plane, right? Isn't that wild? Okay, now we're going to start to add some of our last little pieces. I'm hearing from everyone that they like they love this style of teaching, the watercolor te techniques, the supply ideas. Thank you, Cherie. Cherie just shared it. Um, it sets you apart. Thank you. I'm trying to do something a little bit different. There's so many amazing card makers on YouTube and, and elsewhere. And everybody has a different style. And this is the thing that I feel resonates best. The way it, gets, it excites me the most is teaching the techniques and really kind of taking deep dives into different kinds of brands and things. Okay, Lynn just said, shared, this is my second video that I've watched and I've learned a lot of techniques. All, but I'm good with learning all, even the nerding. Yay, 
Love it. There's another fire engine going by. So my apologies, friends, if that's that's probably going to be super loud for a moment. But you know what? I love live TV because it's fun. It's fun. We get to connect with each other. We get to, you get to see how things are like really in the thought process. And I just love that. Okay. Earlier, before I went live, I stamped out a few of the leafery images and I die cut them. And I also stamped out one of the flowers in the black obsidian because we're going to do just, I'm going to add just a smidge of pink to it to create that line and wash feel. A little bit of pink. Oh, Susanna, thank you. She agrees with Cherie. I love you guys. Everybody's so, so sweet, so good to me. Add a little bit of a little bit of water to this die cut. I'm gonna add a little bit of paint and just let that kind of do its thing. Clean off my brush. Thank you, Gloria. Coax that, coax that little bit of neon pink around and get that line and wash kind of feel. So there, it, it's not as intense as the line and wash that we have here. And that's okay because it's gonna give us some of that really nice contrast between our blacks that are happening here, our lines and our wash, our washy washies of watercolor. I'm gonna dry this because we're gonna get to assembling the card. And I wanna make sure, oh, burn. Should have a paper clip or, or a clothespin, right, to hold it, but I'm not doing that. Okay, see how we've got that hard line right there in that piece? I'm just going to take my brush and just kind of just add a little bit of water to it and just kind of push it out, blend it out a little bit. So I've got a little bit of color here. I think this is my favorite. This is like going to make my whole day, my whole weekend. This is crafting my joy right here. I just love the way this looks. All right, I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna start assembling the card. The card today is going to be no sentiment. We're gonna put a sentiment on the inside because um, I didn't leave enough room for a sentiment. And I really didn't wanna focus on the sentiment today. I really wanted to focus on the painterly effects that we were creating. I just kind of love that. Putting this right kind of in the middle here, I'm moving it a little bit. Taking the edge, holding it down and just kind of lifting that edge up a little bit. And we're gonna tuck some of the leafery just right behind it. Tuck some of the leafery behind it. And this part of the leafery I, I was going to watercolor them like I did on my original sample, but I'm not going to. And here's why. Here's the nerd out. I really like that contrast. We've got a lot of watercolor, washy watercolor going on in the background. And we have a lot. We have a wash of watercolor happening in our boot. And we have a lot of it happening in the main floral. I want to balance that out for the design with a little bit of line, line work. And this, this leafery helps us do that. And then by adding this solid leafery, I have to figure out where I'm gonna add this though. I think I might have it go this way. Nope, don't love that. I think we're gonna end up having it kind of tuck up and just kind of nest right here. Yeah, let's see what we like. Let's see what we like. So this particular piece of leafery is more of a solid. So we're creating more contrast here. I don't like the way this is going. So let's tuck that in a little bit more. Nest that back. Because I'm creating this like kind of like a C curve here happening right here. So we've got our contrast. We have darks, we have solids, we have line art, we have a little bit of mix of line and wash. We have line and wash here. And then we have that whole background going on behind it. Now, 
Gloria said, I'll be thinking of that blue flower all day. Rhonda said, Rhonda just shared, I love learning new techniques. Everything is new to me. Giving you courage. Yes. To try watercolors. I'm so happy to hear that. Giving you courage. I'm giving you, here we go. I'm handing you the permission slip. Get your watercolors out and let's roll with it. Let's have some fun. I thought about, okay, so here's, I really thought this would, that flower back there would give me a little bit of extra something, but I kind of don't like it. I love the concept that I had in my head. So again, like in my nerdy brain, the concept was to create another line and wash flower, tuck it behind the, the flower here that's like super washy, but I'm not so sure about it, but I'm going to keep going. And I'm just going to tuck it right in there and let it kind of do its thing. I think, I think I'm starting to like it. I think it'll be all right. We've got that line and wash. We have super washy here. We have a solid and then we have some of our line art images. I'm kind of digging it. Now, I think I like it. Now, I think I'm going to add just a few little jimmies, little jemmy jimmies. Let's grab a few little sequins. Oh, it looks like I got a little bit of ink right there. Oh boy. I don't know where that came from, but whatever. We're going to add a few little jimmies right here. Just, I think I'm just going to add three. Keep it super simple. I've got my picker. Add a little pick, little jimmy right here, or sequin. I keep calling them jimmies, but they're sequins. I love these sequins. I think I'm pretty sure I have these listed in the description. These are those flat sequins. They just to add a little extra detail. You know, with not without a whole lot of height. All right, I'm really digging this card. All right, we're going to come back to it. Back to answering the question about some beginner watercolor sets. Okay? Before we close for today, and I send you into the weekend to craft your joy couple of beginner watercolor sets that I think are super, super affordable, high quality. So you're, you know, you're making an investment in paints. You don't need all the paints that I have, friends. I know that you hear me say that over and over and over again. You don't need the high-end brands if you're really just getting started. You can start with something else that's a little easier on your pocketbook and gives you those beautiful, beautiful results. So here's probably the top three I would recommend. Paul Rubens. And I, I just really, this is a little set of 12. I've used these on the channel before. I will go back in after um, the live and add some, some of these to the description so that you have some references. But if you do look at other videos on my channel, even if you just come to my channel, type in Paul Rubens, you'll see all the other videos I've used this set with. The reason why I like this little set of 12 is it's super affordable. It's under $30. I think it's somewhere around $22. And on Amazon, it fluctuates because as we all know, prices on Amazon fluctuate all the time. But the beautiful thing about this set is that every single color in it is a single pigment. So it's super pure high quality, except for um, the Payne's Gray, which isn't, isn't um, it's three, three colors, three pigments to create that. But this is a really, really great set. You can mix a lot of colors with this set and it's super affordable. And I mean, it's in this cute little pink tin. I and mean, how cute is that? How cute is that? Great set to start with. And artist quality, artist quality. Now the Rosa Gallery, Rosa Gallery, this is the set, this is that romantic set that I shared last week. I have several Rosa Gallery sets. Um, the Rosa Gallery, these are, these are paints from the Ukraine. They're amazing. They're also on Amazon. I've listed them many, many times and I've shared them many times. So the question about being able to use these paints to do the technique that we did today by coloring that paint on your stamp, you can use any watercolor paint that's out there. It's all in the consistency that you need to get 
to get to paint it onto your stamp. Now we went for that whole milk consistency. So that means a lot of pigment and not a lot of water. And we're lifting that up and, and painting that onto our stamp so we kind of get that full strength look. And then we can work with that paint that's there just by adding a little bit of water to it. So I hope that answers that question. But Rosa Gallery is another um, brand that I recommend for paper crafting projects. And there, it's because it's hot, so, so good, so high quality. This is the set that we used in the last tutorial. It's called the Romantic set. Um, but there are many different sets. There is a set that Rosa Gallery has on Amazon called a mono pigment set of 12. And they always, always come in full pans. So you're literally, if you invested in that one set, full pans, you're probably going to have, you're going to have it for a really, really long time if you're just using it for your card making projects, probably forever, for life. You probably won't run out because full pan of watercolor is a lot of watercolor. Now, if you're painting with it every day and you're doing lots of things, you might run out of the color, but they also have tubes that you can refill the, refill the um, pans with. Now, Cotman. Cotman watercolors were mentioned. Here's a set of Windsor Newton Cotton 12. You can get these now on Amazon like about 12, 18 to $20 is like their base price on Amazon, but you can get it a lot cheaper. Sometimes I've seen it as low as like 12 um, on Amazon. And here's another version of Cotman. And you can see I popped a couple Rosa Gallery in here. Here's another version of Cotman that I had. This was a set of 18. Um, it's the Windsor Newton, and I kind of custom did a couple different things in here. Windsor Newton Cotman, I feel, is a really good um, set for beginners. Now, I would pick the other two. The other two seem to be more vibrant, but I like to paint super, super vibrant colors. Um, I do love the set. You can see it's well loved. I love using this in my sketchbook. I love using this in for my paper crafting projects. I think it's just a fantastic brand. You can't go wrong with Winsor Newton. The professionals tend to be the professional paints tend to be a little more expensive, but the Cotman is a great way to get started with your paper crafting projects. My all-time favorite color from Winsor Newton here I'm nerding out a little bit is Permanent Rose. And Cherie is here. She's taken my water, watercolor wonderland class, so she'll probably remember this. In that class, when I was talking about the differences between, um, between professional watercolor paints and student grade paints, the way the market sells them, I showed the difference between Cotman Permanent Rose and Cotman and um, Permanent Rose in professional. And there really wasn't that much of a difference. So, you kind of need to experiment a little bit. But anyway, I hope that those three kind of give you a good sense of three good brands that are great for getting started and especially great for getting started with your watercolor, with your paper crafting projects. Now, other companies, like other stamping companies, many stamping companies have watercolor sets that they've put out. And those sets are fantastic too. Um, I just prefer these. Those other sets tend to be, they're really great. They're really vibrant, um, pretty affordable price. So if you have one of those like Prima or even like Altenew has a set, um, the Mungio, that's another brand. Mungio, they're all very similar. They're like craft for the craft, crafting industry watercolors that have been developed there. But those are three of my favorite brands. But honestly, friends, I love all watercolors. I love so many. And like when a new one kind of comes out, I want to get it and test it and play with it. And not that it does anything different. I'm just curious. But I will say, and I've talked about this on the channel before, and we are working up to that video. Um, and we've been talking about it a little bit this year in different videos. Every brand in watercolor is a little bit different from the other. So, and that has to do with the way it's manufactured 
and the, the kinds of pigments that are used in the paint and the binders. And they all do something a little bit different. And that's what makes me super curious and feel super nerdy to share with you. And I hope everybody's loving that, loving how that's going on. Um, okay, everybody says they're going to just kind of take a peek. All right. I hope that really helped answer everybody's kind of beginner questions. All right, friends, this is the way the card turned out. Here was the original inspiration. So side by side, I love like we've got that washy look over here was a much lighter color. I'm really digging that darker flower. It really has a lot of contrast. Um, Gloria says you do have a video on paints that they can refer to. Yes, I, I do. Um, I don't have, I do have been, I have been doing it in a couple different videos and I do, I've used Cotman, I've used Paul Rubens, and I've used Rosa Gallery many times on this channel. So there's several videos. So after, I'll go back in after the live and I'll add, maybe add some of those links so that they can be helpful and useful to you You can come, when you come back to this video. All right, friends, I'm loving the way this turned out. I hope you got a lot of let's get my face off here and let's head back to the front camera i hope you got a lot out of today's video i know that it felt a little bit scary when we first started and i talked about line and wash and i showed a line and wash example but here is the ad we did the adaptation of that today using watercolor creating abstract florals and doing some stamping over top and that's what just it's just kind of exciting. Just really makes me excited. All right, friends. We've gone over a little bit today. We've gone over our hour a little bit. Next week, <coughs> excuse me, next week, let's get a little drink here. All right, next week, I'm going to be back on Wednesday. If you're on my email list, that'll pop into your email on Tuesday, all the links and everything. If you're not on my email list, I would encourage you to join. I share when I'm going live. I share when the Gina K releases are happening. I share when I've got discounts going on for my online classroom. And um, I try to make those emails that go out to you meaningful and have be chock full of a lot of inspiration. I also have a free online classroom. Um, in, my, in my online classroom, I have a free... Uh, community where I'm sharing lots of tutorials and I have a lot of content there that I don't share in social media. So, all right, friends, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy and I hope you got a lot out of today's tutorial and despite the noise and all the weird things that were happening, I hope you got a lot out of today's tutorial and it will encourage you to get out your watercolors and try this line and wash technique. I'm seeing everybody just kind of say thank you in the chat. I'm just so glad you could all join me today. Okay friends, have a fantastic weekend and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye now.